Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Today's show features Vitika Kulhoff. She's been on the program three times previously. If you'd like to, and I highly recommend that you do, watch the previous interviews because she is here again offering us a channeling session with Arjun of the Ya Yao. And I'm very excited because we're going to be doing at least two of these and covering world news and things that are going on currently. And we hope to really deep dive for y'all. The show has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award. I recently returned from Denver, Colorado, where Dare to Dream won the Coalition of Visionary Resources Award, Best Radio Show and Podcast. And we're currently listed in WOLP magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. Thank you to all of you for your current and ongoing support. Thank you for liking the show, subscribing to the show, and leaving your comments. I do read all of them. The show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do amazing energy work out in the world. You can become a facilitator and you can also attend any of their online or in-person global classes. Go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger and I am a media visibility expert. I show you how to write a highly engaging book. I'm a book writing coach and I do private sessions and group sessions. I help take your book to a guaranteed international bestseller. And the third leg of my visibility hub is showing you how to be interviewed on radio and podcast shows and get massive results. If you're ready to become way more visible and have way more people find you through books and through interviews, please accept my free gifts to you, videos, templates, ways to do this right now. Go to debbie-dashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. Today we're being gifted with a channeling session through Vita Kukulhoff with Arjun of the Yael. My guest is Vita Kukulhoff. When Vita was just three years old, she started having multidimensional contact with different types of extraterrestrials. Her amazing life journey brought her into direct contact with a personal guide from a group of beings called the Yael. The Yael interact directly with other beings from the Pleiades who reside in the fifth and sixth dimensions. Vitika herself is an artist, a life coach, an energy worker from the Netherlands, who is here from Arjuna the Yael to channel about the current state of affairs and the relationship between Vitika and the Yael serve as a gateway to bring forth information from the greater universe parallel realities, as well as messages from clients' higher selves. And you can learn more about Vidika and Arjun. Go to designforawareness.com. It's design, the number four, awareness.com. And with that, I welcome Vidika Kulhoff back to Dare to Dream. I am so excited to have you here today. Thank you, Debbie. I'm so excited to be here. And thank you. Thank you for this wonderful co-creation. Mm, always. <laughs> yes. Reading your bio, I'm taken with that line that says three years old. My God, that's very young. Starting <laughs> having multi-dimensional contact with different types of extraterrestrials. Do you have recall about that time and who or what it was outside of the Yael? Um, yes, actually I do. Uh, my memories reach back real far. Um, so um, for instance, the, the first uh, relatively jolting experience that I had, that's often, it's sometimes, it, it's, it, it's often something um, that's really out of the ordinary that makes you consciously aware of, you know, uh, something to remember something as a child when something happens that isn't considered part of your normal environment and you see that for the first time that makes an impact. That's what I'm saying. 
So one of those first incidents is when I was standing in my um, crib <laughs> and it's one with those um, railings so that the, the, the little child won't crawl out and start wandering around the house, you know? So with the big, um, like you, I want to say fence, but it sounds so horrible. <laughs> the bars. It has, it has the bars around it, yes. And I'm, you know, since English is my second language, I may not have the most uh, elegant word for this. But so there's that type of bed and I was standing in it as a little uh, girl and uh, holding those bars, like pu pulling myself up by the bars, standing that way. Um, I was supposed to be sleeping. Um, so I don't know what time it was, like late at night or early morning, I don't know. But um, I know I was awake because there was an energy in the room that I couldn't um, uh, interpret as anything I already knew. And then a being started coming through the wall in front of me. So that really freaked me out. <laughs> um, and I remember bargaining with them that they should go if they went they could have my breakfast is what I told them <laughs> but this is you know as a child you respond in a certain way I made illustrations about that incident when I was in art school oh. at the age of about 22 23 and I, I put it into a, like a self-made uh, kind of illustrated little book um as my way of processing these type of experiences and there were many memories like that uh, much later down the road, I understood that those were the greys, the beings that came through the wall in that moment. Um, they came across to me as very mechanical. I don't know how else to say it. It almost looked to me, that was my screen memory, is what I understand now. So sometimes our minds um, um, put filters in between um, beings from other dimensional realities um, and images that we do know we can relate to, you know? So you may pull from other um, databases basically to puzzle something together that you can make some kind of sense of. So that's what I did with the grace. And in my child's mind, they looked as if they had merged with actual tools, like uh, a drill <laughs> and a hammer and a saw, like really crazy basic tools that you would use in you know fixing up the house because these were tools I was familiar with but uh, what it was really um representing to me so these were the filters I used in my child's brain to make sense of the idea of, of their merging with technology uh we didn't have a computer in the house at that time uh I knew there was something mechanical about them so I, I blended it with tools that's what it looked like in my head and um I knew they were well much larger than I was but still not super big but bigger than me uh, I had to look up to them and they came through the wall and I remember there was a moment where there was three of them by the way they they had a little shock of me being shocked you know it kind of like ping-ponged and uh, I started bargaining in my child way, like, please go away. And, and if you go, I was like thinking of a way to, to get them out. Uh, if you go, you can have my breakfast. And they were also like having their own uh, little chat. And I think decided to leave because they understood I was aware of them and that wasn't in the plan. Uh, so they left. Um, and then in other visitations, uh, they came as animals often. Uh, so in the middle of the night, uh, a, a, a bunny with really big eyes or a cat could visit me, suddenly be in the middle of my room, uh, which still freaked me out, but less. Um, and they had always big eyes and I made paintings about that as well. Um, and, and it was much, much later that I learned about the principle of screen memories. And I understand that they understood we have to warp to some degree to visit this child so that she won't get freaked out to the degree that she did when we were in our full <laughs> normal self. Um, so those are- Were you still, when, when they came through as animals with these big eyes, um, were you still bargaining with them to, you know, no. please go or now no. you were okay to interact? And if so, no. what was the outcome? I loved animals, but I also understood 
I was, you know, old enough to understand that that animal isn't supposed to suddenly be in my room. I mean, my mom would have chased it out of the house if she knew, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I knew the animal wasn't supposed to be there, but I loved animals. So I would just, you know, not say anything. <laughs> uh, didn't freak out too loudly. I did call my mom once when, when um, I felt it was taking too long, like this bunny just hopping around. And then I started screaming and it, it went under my bed. And this sounds so much like a, like a, a child's fantasy story, right? Uh, but my mom came in, she helped me look for it. There was nothing there. We took everything from under the bed. There was nothing there. Um, but I know I was wide awake. So this is what really, really uh, made such a big difference from having a nightmare. I knew I was awake. I could feel them coming. It came with a high-pitched tone. It came with a low buzzing hum. I don't know how to say this. Mm. over how to describe it really um and it was much later that i started um becoming more familiar with you know reports of other people who have had contact with extraterrestrials and uh, the grace that all of these puzzle pieces all of a sudden starting to fall together and it took me a while to to realize what 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 had been going on um, but by the time I figured that out, I was also already in another stage of contact. So the greys are the first ones I remember. And, and there came a point where I was no longer afraid. And it all transformed into eventually um, beings from Pleiades, from Sirius, uh, and then the hybrids of which the first species that I ever saw in an out-of-body um, uh, experience was a Sasani uh, male being. He was the first hybrid that showed himself to me in full, um, you know, like the full shape, the actual shape they have. Um, and he showed it to me in a slow motion warp from being a white cat, being in my room. By that time, I was out of the house already. Um, and there was the white cat in my room and it warped into the Sasani being. And I was like, wow, who are you? What are you doing here? And I also immediately understood he telepathically let me know, like he sent me the thought by looking at me. He sent me the understanding, immediate understanding. This has been us all along. So he showed me the transformation from animal to being. And that's when I understood, whoa, you're one of, you know, at least the lineage same lineage that has been visiting me for as long as I can remember almost. And the purpose of their visits is, are, are they helping you acclimate so you can do the work you came here to do? Are they family? Are they parts of you? What Do you know what your soul contract is? Really good questions, all of those. Um, I didn't know I was going to channel. I didn't even know what channeling was until I was in my late 20s that's when I for the first time heard the term channeling I didn't want to have anything to do with mediumship at the time I was you know stay away from me with that kind of stuff and ghost stories and all of that and I think I was I had an aversion to it because I knew there was truth to it and I wasn't ready to come face to face with it just yet so I felt this was something I had to learn to live with it was uh my thing um I saw um hypnotherapist at the age of 23 to make more sense out of it he helped me overcome my fears which was great and 180 degree turn in my relationship to the beings uh, because from then on i could i actually he inspired me to to open the dialogue which i never thought of before because i was afraid to tell adults about this kind of thing um and with him i felt safe i mean he was a therapist he had to you know keep it to himself i felt safe to at least describe it as i'm having really vivid nightmares <laughs> that's how i described it of beings who visit me and they keep coming back and i don't know why and i don't know what they want and i try constantly to send them away like it's the same attitude that i had as a three-year-old <laughs> without bargaining with the breakfast i was trying to you know get rid of this and he told me, which was amazing to hear an adult man tell you at that age, um, whatever you perceive uh, in this multidimensional realm, so whether it's a dream or what have you, 
is an aspect of you. And if it keeps coming back, it has a message for you. Why don't you try uh, communicate with it or ask it what it wants instead of immediately sending it away? And as soon as he had said, it's an aspect of you, my fear disappeared. And I was like, wow, that, then I must be able to communicate with them. And now I understand. So now, <laughs> and I've been channeling in public for seven years by now, um, come out of the closet for seven years with this whole thing. Uh, I understand that all of that was preparation. I can use it as such, even though there wasn't the, um, like, this is your mission. This is what you have to do. It wasn't like we're schooling you to do this because that's what you're going to do. It's that on a soul level, I decided to wish to have that possibility. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly how Arjun um, suggested to me that we would work together at some point. He said, you're ready now. Uh, and this was in 2013-ish. Uh, he said, you're ready now, we can work together and you can convey these messages or pass them through to other people if you wish. Uh, and before that, I was using them for myself. At some point, there was enough harmony between me and them that I felt guided by them myself. And at that point, I thought, this is, always, this is how it's always going to be. I feel guided and they're with me and that's it. And I'm still not going to talk to anybody about this. I'd be crazy. You know, that's what I thought until he, you know, announced, you know, you're ready now. If you want to, you can share it with other people. But then I was life coaching. So I had uh, clients. So the timing was right. I had overcome my previous fear of working with people because that was an issue before. Um, and I think they quote unquote waited until all the puzzle pieces were in the right place so that I could in fact immediately apply this or begin to actually facilitate it without too much hustle because there was an audience basically. And so I started trying, trying that as an experiment and I'm still sometimes joking to people that what, where I am today is an experiment gone out of hand. Basically. Wow. <laughs> Uh, are they family? There are lineages. Some of the greys that visited me are, if you would trace it all the way back, there's a lot of time in between that future version of human that are the greys, as I understand it now, and us today. But there is some familiarity, there is some DNA, you know, so they, they traveled back in time to find a family member that would be on a soul level, willing to fulfill a certain part. And during those visitations, as far as I understand, there were all kinds of classes and studies. I feel I learned a lot from these um, encounters, not just with them, also with other beings. Um, it's much more of an orchestra than um, mm. you might think, maybe. Mm. And um, um, I guess part of the function of the contact with the greys in my early years was I guess I guess they really functioned kind of as a wake-up call and part of their more startling energy yeah was just simply effective with that and also they showed me um versions of future earth um well quote-unquote gone wrong basically their version of earth and that also helped me realize at a very young age, we have to cherish our planet and want to, well, I was immediately always interested in lifestyle as a result of that, understanding how precious this planet is. And I think as a part, that came as a part from these um, visuals, like I received uh, snippets of movie. <laughs> They show it in, to me in visuals. I'm a very visual person and this is a very effective way to communicate with me. So mm -hmm. we are all telepathically gifted in one way or another. And for some person, audio is more effective. For the other, it's visuals. For the other, it's tactile. So for me, I still up until this day remember some of the images they showed me. Powerful. I, I have another <laughs> question for you about this, but I, I will also need to check in with you. 
Yeah. Now, five minutes ago, I felt a very profound energy shift happening here with us and between us. All right. <sighs> it, it's really powerful to breathe through. It's very positive, but it's it's very dense and heavy. That's the way I might describe it. I don't know how else to say it, but mm. palpable. Something completely shifted. <clears throat> Do you feel this as well? Uh, I feel it to some degree. If you're feeling it that strongly, it might be an interesting question for Arjun, why you're feeling it so strongly. You know what I mean? Because if you're feeling it this strong, I feel it, but just to some degree, I'm not bothered by it. If you say dense, um, sounds like you're being spoken to in a more direct way at this moment. Yeah, okay, we'll explore that. Yes, it's not unpleasant, <laughs> but it's an right. adaptation. Okay, for are you sure. okay? Do you I'm feel okay? very okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a plot twist. We need a UAP paramedics. <laughs> no, it's an awareness that's, I feel that something joined us. Oh, well, that's been right from the start. I mean, we're definitely not alone. I know that with any one of these, well, maybe that's what you're tuning in with. And it just took you a little longer. And this is what I've been feeling from the start. But mm -hmm. I'm more used to it, right? So, um you do actually get used to the energy frequency of these guys. Uh, I know, and I'm not even talking about the grays right now, but I'm talking about the hybrids uh, who are very present with any one of these chats that we do because they know, you know, we, we, we planned to give them the stage for at least a portion, portion of this conversation. So they're there. <laughs> yeah, I, and we will explore this. So thank you for approving that so to speak or suggesting it because <laughs> it's for i can only say for me and i feel like normal compared to you like totally just a regular joe uh who doesn't have these extraordinary experiences when this happened because i'm very sensitive to energy when because this just happened i don't want to make it sound like i've experienced this before but i because this just happened i have an awareness and then an awareness of a choice of what to do with it and then uh, an agreement, if you will, or a choice to modulate with it, to invite it, because it's actually very calming and relaxing and thick, like jello. I don't know how else to explain it. Also very much like puddling, which is very pleasant, but also an awareness to stay connected with you okay, and right. not go away, because I could very easily sink into it, but to stay really present to exactly what is wow so yes i'd like to explore that and and before we do i want to ask the question because i find what you're sharing so fascinating that um so with your connection to our june which is so special and so beautiful that you've all made this agreement to do this for us in this life through this beautiful being vidika is our June for you a being? Is it a collective of people? Mm -hmm. Is it what what is that and what is your relationship to that? All right. So our June is an individual in my view of him, and he's male. That's why I'm saying him. Um the Yael are a race. You uh, well, are they a collective? So this is a language barrier, possibly. Um, when people say collective in the spiritual scene, I usually interpret that as non-physical collective, you know, like um, a group of spirits or uh, beings that reside somewhere in the, you know, seventh, eighth or above dimension where there is no physicality as we know it. Uh, they are physical. It's just um, on a higher vibrational wavelength. So um, when we go into a higher vibrational state, we can meet and we could touch and speak and you could hear them and all of that. Um, and it, they're not even that far away, far away um, frequency wise. Um, he has told me that they do visit Earth and sometimes walk amongst us and hardly they're hardly noticed on the street 
also because not everybody can see them. <laughs> so you would have to really be tuned in to see them, but it does happen. Um, they don't visit regularly like busy, crowded places because that's energetical, energetical chaos <laughs> with us and our way of thinking and everything. But they do go to more natural places where, you know, a hiker now and then or some people may pass by and um, yeah, they can go undercover. Uh, the children also visit Earth and I mean the hybrid children. So the children that yeah are either of the Yael or grow up with the Yael as parents. Um, and they also visit Earth and uh, sometimes are here, but not too, too long because it has something to do with the density of our planet and how long they can stay in that energy field. But they're adjusting. And if in the future, potentially, we as a human species uh, choose to proceed on um, the path of open contact, then the children are one of, one of the first to actually um, integrate among us, if we wish. So this is all open, possible future timelines. Um, yeah, we'll have to see how things unfold, obviously. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, with that, I am really excited to open up this conversation with our June. And if this feels right and light to you, can we shift into that conversation and connection with our June? Yes, we can. <laughs> and just to get back shortly to what you said earlier about um, that you felt you could really sink into it, that, that feeling. You're still having it, by the way? Very much so, although I feel more balanced in it. It's more okay. integrated. Ah, so you're adjusting. You're already balancing it out. Mm -hmm. Because what you said at the beginning of um, knowing that you could, you know, sink into it like stepping into a hot tub basically yeah. <laughs> that's that's how i felt when i just started working with arjun i had difficulty opening up my mouth to to let out a word at all because the energy was so filling up the entire room and i i, I didn't know how to um literally channel it just yet so that that was a traje trajectory it took some time to get used to it Oh yeah. my, I can imagine because I, I could feel it at a, a cellular level and I'm not even the channel, right? So that I must think, be. I think it happens more and more often and you actually hear this regularly from people who go to group channelings or even people who do the deeper, more intensive kind of meditations, um, like some Joe Dispenza meditations or... Um, uh, what's it called? Binaural beats. Uh, lots of this is also for free on YouTube nowadays. So when people choose to go into that deep dive into the self, um, they may, um, well, I want to say accidentally, but nothing is accidents, you know, uh, run into uh, a parallel incarnation of themselves, a contact uh, from the multidimensional spheres um, that gives them that feeling where they're suddenly aware, hey, I'm not alone. And I may have never been alone. Like I have guides, like these type of um, discoveries are being made by people much more often nowadays, I feel. This yeah. is exciting stuff. Even to feel that much of what you might feel is like. I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> I'll take it. It's, it's much more accessible. I really want to just debunk the idea that I, I am doing anything special here because I do believe we can all channel in one way or another. It may just come through differently for different people. Um, yeah, but just to, I want to have said that before we dive into it. <laughs> all it's right. A playing field. Okay. It is definitely interesting and it, it is not anything that we've learned in elementary school. <laughs> Usually. Yes. Yes, exactly. We're hopeful. Um, all right. So uh, as you already know, uh, you know, Debbie, but uh, I may have to explain to any new listeners, I do a little short guided meditation out loud. So anybody who wants to, you can join if you want. Uh, maybe don't join if you're driving a car. <laughs> or no crazy things, you know, uh, be on the safe side before anything else. 
Uh, but if you're at home, you're sitting, you, you're not feeling like you could be disturbed at any moment, uh, feel free to join in. And um, it's my way of connecting with the Yael. And by the end of that little guided meditation, uh, Debbie will be speaking with Arjun. So Debbie, have fun and everybody else who's listening as well. And I'll see you later. <laughs> Beautiful, thank you. All right. So for anybody who wishes to join, you can begin by taking a nice few deep breaths in and out. And with every out breath, see if you can release all the tension that might still be in your body or in your mind at this moment. And gently bring your attention to your heart space if you like. And then imagine from your heart a silver line beginning to sink down through your body, through your belly, down through your legs, all the way down to your feet, through the building and into the ground. And imagine that silver line sinking deeper and deeper moving effortlessly through all the layers of the earth until eventually you reach the center of the earth, the heart of the planet. Whatever this looks like to you right now in your imagination, it is absolutely perfect and you're being warmly welcomed to make a strong connection to this place in your very own way. And when you feel that you have in your own way made that connection, imagine that earth energy then flowing through your silver line, traveling back up, same way you came through all the layers of the earth, returning to the house and the room that you're in. And then imagine that earth energy, perhaps in a color, however you wish, flowing back into your body, beginning at your feet, moving up to your knees, embracing every single cell along the way. And from your knees to your hips, the same thing happens. Every cell begins to resonate in harmony with that earth vibration. Through your belly or lower back, up along the spine and into your chest. And with the next deep and calm breath in, imagine that earth energy then flowing into your heart and filling it up completely. And then if you wish, imagine that same silver line going on a second journey, this time moving upward from your heart, through your throat, through your head, out through the crown chakra, through the building and into the sky. And higher and higher, beyond the clouds, beyond the ozone layer and into the cosmos, your silver line flies effortlessly amongst the planets and the stars this time until eventually it reaches the central sun of your solar system. And here too, you're being warmly welcomed to make a strong connection to the center point of the sun in whatever way you would like to do that right now. And when you feel that you have in your own way, also made that connection. Imagine that solar energy too then flowing through your silver line, traveling back across the universe, returning to your tiny blue magical planet that you call Earth, returning to the continent, the country, the state, the area, the house, and eventually the room that you are now choosing to be focused in. And imagine then that solar energy too flowing into your body, starting very gently at the top of your head and moving through your head, through your neck, back and front, into your chest, between and around the shoulder blades, like a blanket of love wrapping around you. And with the next deep and calm breath in, imagine that solar energy too then flowing into your heart and merging with the earth energy frequency that was already present there in a never ending golden spiral. And if you wish, you can put one or both of your hands on your heart for a moment to anchor there, to land there. For this is where heaven meets earth within you. 
It is the door through which we speak, the window through which we see at this moment of your time. For dear friend, we are here and we thank you for the invitation of this co-creation. How can we be of service? Uh, thank you so much for being here, Arjun. I'm so thrilled to be with you again. Oh, thank you. Likewise. I want to start with this feeling that I experienced while I was speaking with Vidika that became, I, for lack of better words in English, quite heavy, palpable. There was a whole energy, energy shift that occurred. And I'm curious about what that is precisely. Was that you joining us or was something else happening and modulating between us in this space? Oh, thank you so much for this question. We would like to turn that around a little bit. It wasn't necessarily us joining you because we were already present. You were joining us. Mm -hmm. You allowed your own energy vibration to rise to the, well, let's say level that we reside on more naturally. You could say that with this, well, in your dimension, this agreement of setting up this program together as you are recording it now, you had to bring somewhat of an introduction in the beginning stage and you had to really be clear headed. You understand? Yes. Sharp, rationally, in that sense, grounded. And once that had passed and you had allowed yourself to dive a little deeper into more casual dialogue with the channel before you, you then begun to allow yourself to relax more. And with that relaxation, at some point, you energetically allowed yourself to much more deeply harmonize with the energy field that, well, in a sense, can be picked up on when people choose to focus on our energy or align with our energy vibration. And you just allowed it to fold open like a flower blooming. That's what you felt. But what you felt was your energy harmonizing with us. So you feel you. There's nothing else for you to be felt. You can't feel us literally, if you understand what we mean by that. Yeah. You're the feeler. You're the observer. You're the I am presence. You are the I am aware of this and this and this emotion, which emotion or which feeling comes from conscious or subconscious beliefs that you are choosing to hold in your, you could say, operating mechanism as a human being through the focus point that is you, as you understand yourself to be in this particular incarnation. So you opened up. And then you became consciously aware of your own overlapping vibration with us. Is this actually my most innate way of being rather than what I usually occupy? It's closer to it. It's not the utmost. It's not nearly the top, if that's what you mean. Mm. You seeing the full blown natural core essence of yourself and we're not just addressing this particular sentence to you alone but to anyone listening in if you were to just see that without any filters you would be blown off your socks the brilliance the light the love the unconditional love the pure radiance of your core essence and this goes for all of you is far beyond what most of you even dare to dream. How can we occupy that space? How can we be that, choose that more often? Is there a process or a way of releasing things? What, what would it take? Well, in a sense, you are naturally wired to quote unquote, become more of that, to embody more of that, because all of you wish to navigate closer to that which you love, that which has your curiosity, mm -hmm. that makes you tick, as you say, that has your interest, your passion, your enthusiasm. 
by following your enthusiasm, you bring yourself in alignment with that which you could refer to as the soul or the higher self. And so by giving hands and feet to those things you love, so not just being interested, but also acting on it, is your way of bringing it down to earth and embodying that state of being, being so that you then, in a sense, tell the universe Yes, more of this, please. And then more of that can come because you have proven to it or if you wish to call that God or, or your source, it doesn't really matter. It's all the same. Eventually, you have proven to it that you are ready to handle it. You are choosing to integrate the breadcrumb trail that all of you have left for yourself. This is fascinating. One of the things when this feeling came over me was I was thinking about ascension. And it seems I've been thinking that ascension has been really difficult. Uh, difficult for me to be in my body. And please, everybody, I'm saying this stuff because if you vibe with this, if you resonate, this is for you, right? If you're having a similar experience, so very difficult for me to be in my body. And also I get tired so much these days. I, I require more and more sleep. And I was thinking that was connected to ascension. And I'm interested in, is there a parallel between the idea of ascension and whatever genetically DNA wise we are having changed in us at this time and what our experience is physically as well as what this experience was for me raising my vibration to connect with you and i hope i've said enough uh, for this question there are several things that we can respond to already yes thank you okay, great so it depends per person first of all whether the idea of ascension is being experienced as something that has them feeling as if they require more sleep or perhaps even has them feeling as if they are gaining more energy. So it depends per person, the theme that they are from a soul level on an individual basis, playing through in this particular incarnation. But ascending, you all are. It's an ongoing process. You naturally grow. Like we said, you have already put down the breadcrumb trails, every single one of you in one way or another have things that you feel more enthusiastic about than other things. So you do guide yourself in many, many ways. Now, obviously there are what you could call distractions along the way. And these often make up part of the theme. So if on a soul theme, you have decided to learn about self-love, then certain distractions that you also create for yourself on your own journey, will be inviting you more profoundly to be integrated. And by distractions, we mean challenges. So as you all ascend, as the version of Earth that you now individually are choosing to be focused on, as you create it through your system of beliefs, that version of earth with you and other people on it as you perceive them through your filter they are all going through their own journey of ascension that planet as you perceive it is going through her own version of ascension it is all rising vibrationally together as a dance as an orchestra playing in harmony or at least reaching for harmony there are individuals that choose to, in a sense, go more into a state of resistance throughout this process, who feel more triggered by it. And there are those that feel like jumping up and down all day with joy. It really depends per person. And it also depends on what segment of the puzzle you have chosen to quote unquote play with in your individual journey. Now, those who do feel they require more sleep usually use those moments of your day when you are resting in that way 
as a little in-between bridge to allow your energy field to acclimatize more, again, to higher vibrational energies, to, in a sense, soothe yourself into more relaxation, to remind yourself through the subconscious levels very profoundly that you are on your path, you are offering yourself a home base, a time out. Take a breath, in a sense, during that night period, particularly also, this can be the case for people who are paradoxically very enthusiastic about evolving and integrating certain perhaps shadow sides in their life so that they may transform it into the light. It really depends per person. If you feel exhausted beyond the point where it is doable in that sense, you may wish to investigate for yourself within your belief system patterns as you have chosen to adopt them up until this point, whether you are or not pushing yourself perhaps a bit too much. You are giving yourself pillows. You give yourself a soft resting place while you are sleeping. But if it feels overboard to some degree, then usually there is room for rebalancing in a more effective way. But it requires some self-investigation, if you understand what we mean. Yes, I absolutely right. do. Yep. Well, thank you. I'd like thank you. I'd like to talk about what's going on in the world. Uh, speaking of triggers and darkness and um, interesting choices. So All right. we are in the midst of one reality on this planet, which is a war currently going on between Russia and the Ukraine. And I know people have really strong feelings about it, as well as a lot of hopelessness, powerlessness about it. Can you speak to us about the war and the why? And if there is hope there? There is always light. Let us say that first. There is always light. You live in a universe where you are playing with polarity. Where there is shadow, there is light. So when you ask, is there hope? We would say there is light. Hope often as a word, often still implies the fear of something going wrong, you see. So we would rather choose light as a word over the term hope. So there is light, definitely always, that every single one of you can tap into. Please remember how we just described not so long ago, the true nature of your core essence and the light that is in there. You all came from the light. You are higher dimensional beings choosing to explore, to have an adventure in a lower dimensional realm, in a collectively co-created physical dream reality is what we call it. So the idea of a war, doesn't fall from the sky in that sense. It is the result of amped up, suppressed, negative vibrations that seek an outlet. The greater the region or the more attention is being drawn to the situation. And now with your media, obviously, this attention can be really momentous. The greater that is, the more it shows you it is a topic that is relevant for every single person that comes in touch with it to be looked at. Now, this doesn't mean you have to start studying war the moment you hear of a war being ongoing here or there. It does mean that when you hear of a war, you're being invited to find a way inside of you to respond to that idea. We have said many times, circumstances do not matter. State of being does. It is from the energy realm that you co-create the quote unquote circumstances as you observe them in your physical dream reality. You have all co-created this war. If you hear about it, the most beautiful thing you can do 
when you hear about this war or any other war or any other conflict or neighbors having a fight. It is all a form of polarity coming to an outburst in one way or another. When you hear of these things or feel confronted with these type of things, we would say, remember your own connection to source. Envision every single participant in these quote unquote circumstances and their unbreakable connection to source. See them from their light. See their core essence shine through the thin veneer of the person acting to be a soldier, acting to choose a side, acting to be angry or victim, what have you. Envision this and remember you are all connected there. The war is just on this tensor level. It is, you could say, a role being played by groups of people. If you do not choose to feel forced from fear-based beliefs to choose, quote unquote, a side in any of this, but allow yourself to remember your own connection to source and to see it in any other human being, you will then bring that energy vibration through your beingness more tangibly on the face of your earth and you will be offering in that way a counterbalancing vibration that if it gains enough momentum if more people join you in that energy frequency can we're looking for the translation end this war blow it out like a candle in the night effortlessly combined meditation could do that you are being invited where you are right now in your evolution to begin to see beyond the old paradigm methodologies that have been applied for so long throughout your history when it comes to the idea of conflict between nations cultures and religions and so forth. Violence is not an expression of strength. Violence is an expression of despair. It is what you reach for when you do not believe in your own beingness. It is what you reach for when you do not trust in your own natural state of abundance. When you choose to believe that you are lacking rather than having you are every single individual who feels confronted with the idea of war or conflict in whatever way, given an open opportunity, an invitation to offer a counterbalancing energy frequency. If you feel inspired to do so, this is what we would say about that, what we are most enthusiastic about reflecting back to you on this topic. Mm. Meditation and light. And in the interim of this war, what we're seeing because of Russia, that in the USA, certainly food prices, produce has gone way up, gas prices, it's fairly insane and prohibitive. And so there's, there's a lot teetering on this and ostensibly connected to this. So what about this upsurge? Will this right itself? Will it go back down? Talk about that. All right, well, thank you. So since everything is connected and your markets, let's just, let's just call it that, are intertwined also with some aspects of the storyline that you've co-created to be surrounding this war, this conflict, and since you are collectively in a very sharp rising line of evolution energetically, there is a part in all of you subconsciously or from the level of the higher self 
that knows that many aspects of your society as you have co-created it to look like right now have in a sense outgrown their uniform, their costume. You intuitively understand things could be divided differently on your planet. You intuitively understand all of you in one way or another crave acceptance of the self, crave a higher spiritual connectedness between each other. You seek nearness, realness, transparency, much more so than you did say a hundred years ago. You have evolved tremendously. You could compare it to the uprising of your technological evolution, the computers, quantum research, and what have you. It has all been moving with the speed of light, so to speak. And on a subconscious level, you were all, every single one of you, whether you were involved in such research or not, co-creators of this, you are all reminding yourselves constantly of the potential that lies within your species, that lies within the energetic field and that has gained so tremendously much momentum over the past few decennia, so to speak. You are aware of this. You have come to a tipping point, a breaking point to some degree, and you are now using, you could say, in many different ways, the idea of this particular conflict as a tipping point, the beginning of the falling of a whole line of dominoes to fall over, wherein one after another important subject, all fundamental to the way you have constructed and co-created your current day society to look like, will be addressed. Economy is one of those. So your politics are one of those dominoes. You are speaking about the transparency that is or is lacking, is present or is lacking in your media. There are more people now than ever that can choose to stand up and use their voice thanks to your social media. That brings up the topic of the presence of or lack of censorship. You are all now ramping up the game. You are accelerating. And so you bring yourselves bolder and bolder previews of that which wants to be looked at. And you are training your discernment so that you can now consciously choose together as a people and not have other people choose for you what it is that you choose or wish to bring into what you call the future and what it is that you choose or wish to leave in what you call the past. Mm. Yeah, Vitika was sharing earlier that as she was as a being becoming acclimated to being a channel, she was shown possible futures that sound like they were probably very difficult to look at. And I feel like hearing you, Arjun, were at the precipice of making some either very pro positive choices uh, for the betterment of humanity and Gaia or possibly going the other direction. And so yes. also drought, climate change are not ha helping famines. Amazing what's going on around the world. So is there a way for us to co-create for this ideal future for mankind when it comes to these challenges? Are there ways that we can access this beauty you're talking about, this potency we be, this light we be, and somehow coalesce it individually or together in order to create an optimal future and, and current lifestyle for us? Yes, that possibility is there. It is a probability. It is something that can manifest for you. Mm -hmm. Or literally, we would not be capable of speaking about this with you. You would not be capable of 
perceiving this information being shared with you. Because if you can perceive any particular idea, you must therefore contain the energy vibration of it within your own beingness. So when we speak to you of how harmonious and how beautiful and how brilliant, how flowy life on earth could be for mankind, and you feel you resonate with that, then that energy vibration that you feel buzzing through your system is your inner knowing of that reality. You, in a sense, through time and space, so to speak, remember it. Mm -hmm. You remember it as a preview from the future. You understand it. You resonate with it because part of you is connected to it. Now, the question is, how do you feel inspired to allow this to crystallize through you. The question is not, what work do you have to do to let this come to you or to pull it into your version of reality? It doesn't work like that. This is a matter of allowance, paradoxically, very different from how you've been raised to believe things occur. It's a matter of, in a sense, relaxing, relaxing into it, soothing into it, and taking action when you feel inspired to act, allowing yourself to no longer avoid certain challenges in your life, but face them and integrate obstacles as you encounter them so that they can transform and be utilized by you as positive energy in your happy engine. So this is the invitation that lies before all of you and as you said yes you are very much at the tipping point at the edge you can still go into multiple directions looking at all of this from that perspective every single one of you incarnated on earth today certainly isn't boring you all chose to really be present physically in a time that is truly cutting edge. And this is why we, amongst many others, are at the tip of our seats to see how you shall eventually choose to handle this, what timeline you choose to allow to manifest through you. And now, if this sounds somewhat overwhelming, perhaps, to some of you, we can ease your minds, perhaps, by reminding you that enthusiasm does not have to mean necessarily that you need to fulfill your childhood dream tomorrow or something that you have felt was unattainable up until now as soon as possible. We do not share any of this with you to increase the pressure that we know is already there for so many of you. On the contrary, we are inviting you to love yourselves more deeply, love each other more deeply, to treasure and really seize every single moment that you can express your love for people around you, your gratitude for their being in your life. See if you can be of assistance if this inspires you in small ways. Also be of assistance to yourself when you feel you need a little break, a time out to organize your thoughts about one thing or another. Have that cup of tea. Take that nice, deep, calm breath in and out. Remember to connect with your own source energy as it is constantly guiding you in every single here and now. And that one moment of taking that breath may shift you a multitude more powerfully to the version of Earth that we know most of you are longing, quote unquote, to be on that already resides within you, but that you would say you long to be on much more effortlessly than pushing yourself forward. This is not a race. There is no deadline. You are eventually all infinite beings. 
So there is no rush. If you eventually find yourself on a version of Earth that is not necessarily of your liking, you can do another round. Now, we don't mean to sound denigrating when saying that, but eventually it may bring some people some reassurance, some ease. Take it one moment at a time, one breath at a time, and continue to ask yourself, what is my preference right now? What do I really truly feel like doing? What is calling me most in this moment? And then see what happens if you allow yourself to act on that and see how magically everything that truly needs to be done will get done in that day. If it did not get done in that day, it will get done in the other days wherein it needed, truly needed to be done. Allow things to flow. It may throw around your regular regime a little bit, but you may find life to become much more playful. You may find your inner child smiling brightly at these surprises and wonderful positive synchronicities that you allow into your version of reality when you relax a little. Okay. <laughs> I have been uh, doing a deep dive into audible books and listening to a lot of Dolores Cannon's, uh, the term is QHHT or quantum hypnosis healing technique. All right. I'm fascinated by this because I find the more I'm learning and ingesting, the more it's just exponentially mind blowing. You know, so we have this idea of reincarnation, although now I'm understanding there's really no such thing. There's not separate linear lives. There's not the me that was back in the 1800s and the me that was back on another planet. It's actually all concurrent. There's yes. only now. Yes. You have many, many spies, simultaneous parallel incarnations. And we've been everything, I'm understanding. We have been the murderer. We have been the torturer. We've been the tortured the murdered, we have been the joyful, the victor, the victim, the etc. So if you can observe it, part of it is contained within your greater essence. If you can see it, if you can connect with it in one way or another. So if you think I see a stranger walking down the street, whatever image you have of them, you contain it in some way. It doesn't mean you are them in this here and now, but you can access that vibration to a much deeper degree on the non-physical platform because eventually all is connected, all is one, and all is, all that is, is simultaneously experiencing all of it. And since you all originate from all that is, you can cross-connect energetically to all the other things or people or what have you, everything else that is. It is that you have chosen to be incredibly, very specifically focused through the idea, the concept of what you are now in this lifetime, your persona self structure, if you will. This has been chosen on the soul level with great joy and mm. excitement, even mm. though some people may feel they went against their will to this planet and they must have been accidentally born to one or another. But there is no such thing. There are no accidents within all that is. Not when it comes to birth, nor when it comes to death, which does not mean suffering is not real. You have real experiences, but you are having them in a co-created dream reality. So what came first? Is there a creator, a source, all that is, that is separate from us, but that we are part of, and we are somehow enacting its very interesting choice to experience itself through all these points of light that are us? Or did we come first and we, are the creator like how does that work 
And why did we decide this? Why did we decide, oh, we're going to do a life and this one will suffer and we'll learn a lot about compassion. Oh, we're going to do this life and we're going to learn about success and giving and helping others. Like, <laughs> that seems so insane to me on some level. All right. Well, the insanity here really comes from asking the question from your own time, space, reality dimension. The structure wherein you're laying out the question, just starting with what came first, implies immediate linearity. Yeah. That is an experience you can only have in the physical time, space, reality that you are choosing to explore right now. So you're speaking from the bottom up. Yeah. You're asking how did the top work within the system that I'm exploring right now, right here. But the top is not exploring that from the level from which it is experiencing itself. It is experiencing all of that. It isn't creating from that, but you are creating each other simultaneously. So source is dreaming, you could say, everything into being. At some point, you could say, even though that would be a linear description, so this is something that has always been and will always be, but in your linear description, at some point, it thought of, quote unquote, exploring the idea of being human on Earth. And then many humans begin began exploring that, again, putting it in your linear time frame for a way of saying it so that you might be able to follow along. But simultaneously, this is all happening here and now. There really is no beginning. There is no end. It will forever happen. And it never started, you see. So there is an ongoing dreaming creation game going on. And you too, perhaps this helps. If source could be compared to what you call God or what some people on your planet called God, can create absolutely everything, and you are an aspect of that, then you can create absolutely everything. And you do, even though you're pretending not to be consciously aware of that. So you're doing that, but you're doing it from a different point of view. You're doing it from a different angle. You're doing it from a place where you're not consciously aware of the fact that that's what you're doing, which is a really exciting, very specific type of journey. But you're remembering right now where you are in your creation, you're in your evolution, your spiritual evolution, you're remembering that this is what you're doing. And that's what's being referred to as awakening. This doesn't mean all challenges will suddenly disappear. There will still be challenges, but you will find more ease and more creativity and more playfulness in your ability to respond to these ideas since you'll be more consciously aware of the fact that you are co-creating these circumstances. You'll be more willing to own them and that will then help you to transform them and that then may shift you to a version of earth and this is perhaps a soothing side to some of you that may still be concerned about your state of being right now as a human race that will then shift you to a version of earth that also already exists that is on a higher vibrational wavelength where there is peace on the whole planet and people are all consciously aware of their own creatorship and create from that awareness together and in harmony, supporting each other, exploring together, celebrating together. And if that makes you feel enthusiastic right now, then you remember that version of earth. And when you remember that version of earth, what you're actually doing is making a direct connection to your soul, to which there is no time, space, reality barrier or illusion of separation between this version of earth and that one. And that's why you right here, right now can feel enthusiastic about it, even though your rational mind is telling you, yeah, but you're not on there yet. You see, but if you can feel that you're on there now, you are bringing it in, linearly speaking. It's already here. You're allowing it through, but linearly speaking, you're bringing it in. 
It's all happening simultaneously. Did this make any sense? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Thank you, yes. thank you, thank you. And so th that's very exciting. So this idea of this dream, we're living and awakening to an in, and this idea that concurrently there's also a planet that is full of peace that we could tap into. So that would beg me to wonder about us. We have these simultaneous parallel lives. Yes. And we're living in at least some of them, I hope, at least some of them, that there is joy and happiness and confidence and direction and fulfillment and power. And it's very satisfying. So let's say that people are out here listening to you right now and they're saying, meh, this life so far, it's it, maybe just right now, it's, it's difficult for whatever reason. And I'm, I'm tired of suffering and I'm tired of the density. I would like it to tap into those lives where there is all this ease and joy and creation. And I'm very aware of my power and how to use it and to create like this. Can we utilize this concurrent lifetime and call that in? in order to start being more of that, being all of it and living from there? Absolutely. And just asking yourself this question brings you energetically closer to those versions of you. So if you will, for anybody listening in, you all have a spectrum, you could say, in front of you of versions of you. And we mean you, the individual that you've chosen to be in this incarnation. There are versions of you, which you already know, that are very grumpy. And that don't want to get out of bed and that feel like nothing has any sense and so on or any purpose and they feel perhaps a little aimlessly drifting at sea or whatever metaphor you can choose to come up with there's those versions of you because you've lived them you know the energy vibration of them you know that this is as a color on your palette available for you to paint your picture of life with artistically speaking. And then there are versions of you that you have also already experienced that fall in love, that are excited, that are curious, that are playful, that are joyfully singing, riding their bicycle, you name it, whatever works for you, whatever picture you have with that. All these versions of you exist and these you have already experienced. Now within the same spectrum and beyond, there are versions of you that are sad beyond what you have lived through. There are versions of you that are ecstatic beyond what you have lived so far in what you understand to be the future. The moment you begin to ponder the directional, you could say availability that is in front of you, all the colors that are on your palette, you begin to energetically cross connect with these options and bring them closer to you. Mm -hmm. So if it is your desire, to embody a strong, confident, happy, and healthy version of you in the future, quote unquote, then imagine aspects of that version of you, write them down or do something else in the physical so that you begin to ground that version into the here and now moment of your conscious awareness. What type of jokes would that person make? What type of things would they do to relax? What type of things would they gift to themselves? Already having such and such a salary, for instance, or having been gifted this and that, or having accomplished such and such in their lives. Imagine it. Allow your imagination to run freely. Bring that into the here and now in one way or another that feels accessible to you. You can write it down. You can make a drawing about it. You can make an art piece. You can sing a song. You can make a dance if you wish, if you are into karaoke. Car we're looking for the translation. Choreography, perhaps play with this in whatever way feels possible to you. Because as you do that, you ground it into physicality. You begin to embody it into the here and now, not just pondering it. That is the beginning, that is planting the seed, that is beginning to initiate the energetic overlap. But really embodying it, pulling it into the here and now, allowing it to crystallize through you by doing something physically related to that idea that you have allowed in through your individual and unique inspiration, the portal of your imagination. 
and then step into that role and allow yourself to play it whenever that feels in the flow and see what happens. Get to know him or get to know her or that version of you that you understand to be that happy, joyful, satisfied future you, inspired, driven, enthusiastic, and so forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I want to check in with the audience and just let them know, because I'd love the audience to check in with us, even if it's through comments, that my energy is uh, I huge right now. And it's been building. And I'm very aware of where, is, where we started. It was very deep and relaxed and this beautiful puddle that that's still present. But this tremendous, I actually almost have to contain this energy, again, be aware of it and, and acknowledge it and say, wow, you are huge. And I could almost fly right now. You're so big, but thank you. And I still choose to be here. This is, I don't know, it's just fascinating to me that the deeper we connect, what changes are occurring. And you are, in a sense, like we said before, you were closer to your source, your core essence, and now even closer to that. That's what you're feeling. Wow. More so. of your true essence, your natural self, as you are allowing yourself with your unique imagination while you are listening to us to fill in the blanks, to fill in what you would imagine for yourself. You're cross-connecting energetically just by imagining what that would look like for you. You're cross-connecting to those versions of you and allowing them to get closer to you. You're beginning to embody them just by thinking of them to some degree already. That's what you're feeling. That is awesome because this is way more the indigenous me and this very tired me that needs a lot of sleep that I've been feeling um, has been curious because that is not what I've experienced most of my life. I haven't felt this Honestly, I haven't felt this kind of energy in probably a couple of years. So this is... Congratulations. So, yeah. Welcome you. home is mm. what we would say. Yes, feels like home for sure. Welcome home. Can you talk about music, Arjun? What is music on your planet? Do you have it? What is its use if you have it? And what can you share with us, uh, earthly beings, about music and how we can tap into it? All right, well, thank you. Music <clears throat> is one of the ways wherein you can playfully connect to the idea of the multidimensional. In that sense, it is an excellent bridge to allow your awareness to broaden its perspective. Energetically, you can travel, you could say, in songs. Many of you, many of you are familiar with this idea. You often feel very moved by certain songs, whether they make you happy or sad. It really doesn't matter whether you use music as an outlet for certain frustrations you have or may have, or use it to celebrate life. It really doesn't matter. It shows to you as you connect with this medium in this way that it is an energetic bridge that you have found a very creative and playful way to communicate vibrations with each other, to build bridges that need no languages really, that can touch hearts through cultures and distances. It bridges all of that effortlessly. On our world, we use it as a form of celebration, we sing, we play certain instruments. We also use it as a tool for deepening our self-knowledge as some of you do when you use music during certain ceremonies and meditation. So do we. We love uh, overtones. We love harmonizing with each other and the instruments we play. We are very sensitive in hearing 
it comes closer to how your dogs perceive sound. We do not need, therefore, very much to perceive a lot. So from few simple tones and some individuals humming, we can already drift away into a state of bliss because of the nuances that are captured in all of that for us when we play with music. This is a tip of the iceberg that we can share shortly with you on that topic. Uh, yes, please. I wish so much I could hear what you're talking about, hear what your voices and instruments sound like. Is there any way that we could hear that? There are forms of harmonizing on your planet that come very close to how we sing. There are some indigenous people that play with the idea of overtones where they make sounds that are a kind of mixture between humming and whistling simultaneously where a whistle comes through with the hum. You can look this up if you wish we play certain string instruments, rather simple, but the idea of your guitar comes close enough. There are some more complex, closer to what you understand to be your harps. We play with crystal balls, like some of you do. So you most definitely have examples on your planet that can energetically bridge to our own versions and experiences with music to quite a close degree, even though your perception may seem, perhaps if you negatively judge yourself, less sensitive, if you open up every single aspect of your being in the perception of this sound, as you can create it for yourself in your own unique way, you will feel the same level, quote unquote, of bliss that we experience when we enjoy our music. Understand that this spectrum that we spoke about before, the colors on your palette, that for you, hitting the ecstasy, you could say, level in that range does not feel less ecstatic than we do when we hit it, even though if you would compare them, ours lies higher up the ladder vibrationally. Mm -hmm. You have created a palette that suits the dimensional reality that you are in. Joy and love bridge all dimensional realities. You can meet us and join us and be present with us in our own orchestra experiences if you wish, and of course, through meditation, in a sense, mm. set out that intent and see what reflects back to you. Come from a non-insisting state, and that will put you in the most allowing frequency for us to then jokingly or more seriously respond to you through what you call synchronicity. Oh. So does that mean then, because I would love to co-create music with you or any of the Yael. So Go right Bob ahead. And I, yes, when we yes. perform, uh, a gig sounds like such a crazy word to use in a divine conversation like this. But when, when we perform music, and or we do a sound bath meditation. Can we invite you? I, yes. I, you can come through me. <laughs> you, you have my yes. permission. I would love to have oh. the experience of that otherworldly kind of um, sounds and vibrations coming through and co-creating something beautiful for humanity or anybody else, anything else that shows up for this. You already channel. You already channel when you sing. You already channel when you play music. Your artists, you, when you are embodying artistry in whatever way of creativity, 
tap into broader fields than just what you think is you from the rational mind's point of view. This goes for every single one listening right now. When you allow yourself to have your hand move freely on the paper, suddenly make a drawing, get out those coloring pencils from the children, if need be, and use them for yourself. See what happens. You are channeling. If you do not overthink, if you lose yourself in that moment, you already channel, you already bring in higher dimensional vibrational realities and beings and guides speak with you, sing with you. We join you on a regular basis, particularly in such ceremonies as we know you and your partner provide music for. It is in the field you, many who participate in such ceremonies, those who choose to listen to particular meditation music and so forth, often have the desire to cross-connect with multidimensional guides that are in their energy field. And those guides will find a way the root of least resistance usually is through those who then choose to facilitate either the music or something else energetically in that space. So those people can receive. You are in that moment already translating. Like we said, music is a multi-dimensional bridge facilitator on its own. The moment you open your mouth to sing, it is not just you usually. And particularly even modern songs and those that gain much popularity. Also, often the lyrics are incredibly channeled. Now, yes. a group that has been particularly strong in this and grew massively in admiration for many of you on your planet were, and you probably know them, the Beatles. Mm -hmm. Yes. Many messages from mm. multidimensional realities and also extraterrestrial beings have been translated through their songs and not just them, also others. Some artists were even aware that they were co-creating in this manner and mm. some are still. Absolutely. The John Lennon song, Imagine, the word still they're so profound to this day to imagine a world full of peace and sharing and no wars. It's so beautiful what he wrote and allowed to come through him. He so, in that moment invited mankind, you could say, to see the core essence, the beauty, the bliss of your natural state to see that in other people around you. He invited you to imagine the earth as we already choose to see it when we look at you. We understand you are playing a game of hide and seek. <laughs> Do you have perfect pitch or relative pitch, the Yael? You mean what is relevant pitch through the dictionary of the channel? It does not translate completely. Sure. So it is an understanding of notes that I'm going to say it in my interesting way, but it is an understanding of the correct note and being able to hit it and hear it. Ah, it is understood. An understanding even when you talk about harmony to understand where that falls and where understood. notes are correctly relative to one another. Yes, thank you. Understood. Thank you so much for explaining. We have, in that sense, intuitive, naturally perfect mm -hmm. pitch. We understand harmony. It is part of our essence and mm -hmm. the way we express ourselves. Mm -hmm. We do have fun sometimes, though, playing to express a sour note. <laughs> it is cause for much fun and laughter. There are moments where particularly children explore that region of their vocal cords just for fun. Oh, that's hilarious. It takes a bit of effort for us to do so, but knowing that you can can be fun.
Mm. I want to ask here at the end, if I may, questions directly for Vidika, because she's such a generous channel to allow this to happen through her. I don't know how much in the waking state she gets to interact with you or ask questions, but <clears throat> I, I guess the first question for Vidika would be, is there anything she doesn't know right now about her art, about her book, about her direction career-wise that would be a great assist for her to understand and be able to enact and follow through on right now? She is, like every single one of you, being given what she needs to know when she needs to know it. There are many things she does not know just yet. Mm. She has signed up for the exploring of the unfolding of this journey. There are things that we cannot answer. Mm. In some occasions, questions she asks that we are not allowed to answer. She has become in her own way, and we are allowed to speak about this right now, you could say, looking at her, to what degree can we share in this methodology? She has become in her own way, we're looking for the translation, specific with the questions that she would ask. She does not ask us directly very much on a very regular basis. She asks us something directly about perhaps five times a year. And usually she asks us to reply in dream state, mm -hmm. which for her is the most profound way of perceiving mm -hmm. the answer. She trusts that everything else, if relevant, will fall into place, which it usually does. And what about for her as far as romance and love? What can you share with her that she might not know right now that would be really helpful? Well, this is a funny one because this is particularly one of the subjects that we cannot make any predictions about. We understand that for her as for anybody else listening in right now who may have question marks surrounding that topic, you have a wide variety of possible and probable futures ahead of you. It depends on to what degree you are willing to allow these to crystallize for you in your own version of reality. We can send her reminders now and then if she has questions on this topic, what direction has highest, you could say, potential. But the idea is that this information is also already being given to her through her own higher self as it is for all of you and this is exactly what we mean when we speak of enthusiasm mm -hmm. this is the breadcrumb trail the sacred breadcrumb trail that all of you have laid out for yourselves for instance things do not have to be rationally connected to each other a person who desires to take singing classes and who desires to find a lover in that moment of their lives may feel that it takes away from their search for a potential partner, staying at home in the evening, scrolling the internet or the dating website, searching for that potential person. Whereas had they followed their enthusiasm to go mm -hmm. and take the singing class, Maybe one of the fellow students might have been that special person for them. So you see, it's really about, like we said before, taking that breath, taking that little moment of allowing yourself to remember the connection with your own core essence, your own source energy vibration, and allowing that part of you that has the overview to guide you through the energy vibration that you understand as enthusiasm. Again, that word broken down, as we have explained before, means God soaring through you. And theosiasm, God flows through you. When you feel enthusiasm, it shows you the way. Mm. Wow. So she can ask us questions on the topic of romance, but 
she also already knows that usually we just send her right back to herself. And do we know each other previous to having met in this forum? Do Vidika and I have a connection that is outside of what felt like how we met and how we're currently connected? Yes, let us answer to that in a way that is educational for everybody else listening in and wondering about still perhaps the idea of simultaneous parallel incarnation. Right now, where you are, you and the channel before you, that you understand as Viteka, you are right now experiencing cross connections with simultaneous parallel incarnations where you also knew each other or where you will also know each other mm -hmm. because they reach both into the future and into what you understand to be the past. So the idea is that when you meet a person in this lifetime and you evolve to some degree a fascination for each other in one way or another, then usually you will be creating from that here and now moment an overlap with simultaneous parallel incarnations that then become relevant for the thing you are choosing to explore in the here and now. Do you understand? I do. <laughs> so had you not chosen to deepen your familiarity, to get to know each other better, or to work together as you now do, then these parallel simultaneous incarnations or the energetic overlap that is now very tangibly and visible and easy for you to tap into if you choose to, would not have gained that much momentum, might not have been visible at all. This is what we are educationally sneaking in through the back door for anybody listening in. You are creating everything from the here and now. Crazy. So you are God from the top level, pretending to be limited by certain ideas mm -hmm. in the seemingly lower level, even though everything is one level, one here and now, pretending to come in from a different angle, but still creating all of it here and now. That makes me really happy. Oh, thank you. Us yeah. too. Yeah, because it's a that's a beautiful thing. I mean, I adore her and I am so happy she's in this life and how many other lives and how many other possibilities. It feels like just a massive contribution and love fest. So Oh, thank you. Yeah, and I'm glad you're a part of that too. I feel strongly you are. And um Arjun, I just love you so much. I'm so grateful to know you. And I'm so grateful that you and Vidika have come into my life and to everybody who's watching to satiate this part of us that's so hungry for this information, so hungry for this connection and for more knowing so that we can better create, be more mindful about how we're doing this and because of our relationship with you ongoing. So thank you for your willingness to fulfill this in us. Oh, thank you so very, very much. We send you and everybody else listening in our unconditional love. From our point of view, you are all manifesting and creating excellently in every single here and now, even the moments where you feel you are walking around with question marks, ponderings, that you may still have insecurities, what have you. You are brilliant, you are perfect in every single here and now. You are naturally expanding. Allow yourself, if this inspires you, to follow that magical breadcrumb trail of your enthusiasm and you will find more acceleration of positive synchronicities reflecting back to you in your version of reality. We celebrate our we're looking for the translation. Presence, we are honored by the possibility for this co-creation. We are grateful for being allowed. This is what we were looking for, to co-create with you 
on this very, very exciting journey that is the human spiritual exploration in this point of your time frame reality, your space time reality. We are both honored and deeply, deeply grateful. We send you so, so, so much love and who knows, see you for some of you listening in right now in your dreams. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. And as Vidika comes back from that extraordinary conversation, I just want to let folks know in just a couple of months, we will be doing another of these. You can, of course, submit questions or comments. We love to hear from you. We do read them all. And uh, to be aware that even outside of the brilliance that Vidika is in this realm, she's an amazing artist. She just recently posted, I, I still can't fathom, but I deeply appreciate. She took the time to videotape herself creating a piece of art from start to finish. And then she took the time to take that video and edit it so it is in a fast motion and you can see the creation of this. It's mind blowing. Um, you can check that out on her Facebook page. Is that also Vidika on your, your website at this time? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's um, on the page that has all the other um, paintings on it. But we can also, much easier perhaps for people, uh, put a link to that video directly in your video description. So yes. people, if, if they want to see that, um, yeah, you know, that that would be fun, perhaps. <laughs> yes, we'll definitely include that in the show notes. How are you feeling right now? Um, yeah, I'm still in the process of landing, but I'm okay. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? How are you doing? I, I realized you were... Uh, uh, going places. <laughs> that's yeah, that's I a mean. great way to say it. I <laughs> have been on a complete energetic journey. I feel so amazing right now. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. That's yeah, amazing. it was like receiving a healing in a way. Wow. Wow. Wonderful. I, I haven't felt like this in a really long time. I feel very humbled by it. And, um, yeah, very moved by that whole experience and connection. And I just know in the beginning, I have to sort of contain myself a little bit because I, I feel a little bit childlike and like I want to just go, oh my God, Arjun, I love you so much. And uh. <laughs> come back and be a host instead and allow what's supposed to come to come. And what was, I think, really magnificent is that there was an awareness of where to go but in the midst of that awareness of, oh, let's talk about these interesting subjects, all sorts of things happen that are completely organic and spontaneous. And it is by virtue of this connection between all of us, probably the audience's energy is even part of it already. And to allow that to have a voice is yeah, really exciting. I really believe that that is also what's happening in these kind of co-creations um uh that oh this is gonna sound so crazy perhaps <laughs> okay anyway it doesn't matter uh that the audience that will listen to this mm -hmm. energetically is already through time and space making a connection with this recording yeah. and that you as a host are in a sense channeling the voice of the people who have questions mm -hmm. and i really do feel that the the role of a person asking a question uh, particularly if it's in a situation that will be listened to by a lot larger um, audience uh, is also channeling that's why i find mm. people who ask really good questions is no less freaking genius than anybody else who might possibly provide a answer and i deliberately say a answer because there are so many answers um, and there's never just one way right there's no right or wrong so um yeah i i think Wow, um, imagining what you've been feeling in the background, you've been doing an outstanding job <laughs> <laughs> verbalizing um, whatever questions you asked Arjun without, you know, 
I don't know. <laughs> you know, this has been the most profound, I feel. So of all of what we've done for all whatever right. reason. And I do feel when I say whatever reason, I mean, a piece of it is my journey with all of this. You know, when we first met, I was so new to this whole subject. It was scary to me. I don't feel any of that anymore. And so it's been, you know, I guess the audience's journey, my journey, your journey, our June's journey, like all of this coalescing at this beautiful, perfect time. Mm -hmm. And it just felt so delicious um, an experience. I, I think this will be with me for a long time. And I'm so anxious knowing that the audience is already here as time is not linear to hear their experience of this and get feedback from them. Mm -hmm. And that we get to continue this conversation, experience, and all of this. I'm just I'm so thankful. Really, thank you for allowing this to all occur through you. You are you are the most important piece <laughs> in all of this. Without you, there would not be this. So thank you so much. Oh, you're so sweet. And still, I'm going to contradict you. <laughs> I, I, I do feel very honored with that compliment and I do also believe so this is what I'm personally choosing to believe to be true that if it wasn't for me somebody else would have done it I really believe that I believe that there is a momentum in the field you know what I mean you know what I mean that um if a, a specific message wants to come through it will somehow come through you would have heard it through another route of exploration or whoever's tuning in right now would have heard it through another route of exploration um I, the reason i'm saying this is because i really really very deeply believe that we're all being given what we need in any given here and now so um yeah and and perhaps uh, I have to to put in in all my honesty uh, because this is how we communicate. I mean, um, whoever else is tuning in, me and Debbie, we we are very like we also have a friendship and we communicate very openly with each other, also sharing each other's processes. Um, and a part of me wishing to say this may always may also be. Um, the part that is a little shy to stand in the spotlights. Mm -hmm. And it may also be the part that that feels there may come some pressure or obligation <laughs> with a compliment. <laughs> so it's both this and that for me. I mean, I'm also obviously going through my own journey and still learning to relax even more deeply in us doing these type of co-creations and addressing real world events, you know, with those guys. Um, that's exciting for my rational mind as well. Um, so I'm, I'm also breaking through my own barriers and it's wonderful that you're offering a platform for this. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning to communicate real open about also this part of my human self that comes, um, yeah, as a part of this journey. But I mean, Altogether, I am so grateful <laughs> uh, for being allowed to do this. Um, yeah, and I really love you, Debbie. Thank mm -hmm. you for building this platform and everybody tuning in. Thank you for following your heart. Um, yeah, in this way, if you've listened this far, uh, it must have resonated on some level. So I, I, I'm grateful for that. <laughs> yeah, thanks for your transparency. That makes so much sense. I understand the peace because we're always told, you know, when the divine gives you an idea, it's yours to act on. You can salt and pepper it and bake it and put it out in the world. Or if you pass, it will be there for somebody else to scoop up. Yeah. So it's that element. And I love the element of the shyness. I resonate with that as well. And I, <laughs> that would be a fascinating exploration in the future because those still here you are, you know, in spite of that, still here you are, which I think is courage, right, to do something anyway. So uh, for all of us who really understand that, like spotlight, what? Yeah. <laughs> feeling <laughs> that's very much alive, but I'm so grateful you do this. And um, for our next one, you know, let this energy go out in the world and create the beautiful change I believe it's here to create. And for those who are interested to find out more about Vita Kukulhoff, you can go to Design 
four, it's the number four, designforawareness.com. Any other place you would like to send them? Um, no, no, for um, international, that, that would be the place to go. There's also Dutch events that I host, but yeah, that's not so useful necessarily for your audience, I think. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I end today's show with this quote from John Lennon. When I was five years old, my mother told me that happiness was the key to life. When I went to school, they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. I wrote down happy. They told me I didn't understand the assignment. And I told them they didn't understand life. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, the weekly Dare to Dream podcast. Please leave comments, subscribe and share. Next week's show is going to be featuring Debbie Solaris, who's an ET contactee, interdimensional traveler, and galactic historian. Debbie offers starseed origin readings, galactic history, and Akashic records. I'm very much looking forward to that conversation and having you on that journey as well. Thank you so much for joining us today on Dare to Dream.